Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 6.1, Operations on Functions. We're going to get things started right away today with some examples. First question asks, given f of x is this guy and g of x is this guy, find each function, indicate any restrictions in the domain or range. Number one asks, it says f plus g of x. What this means is that we're going to take the f function, this guy, and then we're going to add it to the g function because it's f function plus g function. So let's go ahead and write this down. And I'm going to first start this by using parentheses. So it's going to be like this, 3x squared plus 7x. That is from the f function. Then the g function, right? We're adding it to it. So it's going to be plus 2x squared minus 1 or minus x minus 1, close it up. Now just going back to last chapter when we have plus, what do we have to do with this? Just drop it out of the parentheses. So it's 3x squared plus 7x plus 2x squared minus x minus 1. Now we just simplify this mess. What are like terms here and there? So it's going to be 5x squared. Then we have a 7x and a minus 1 to get a plus 6 x and then we have no other numbers except negative one so it's minus one so our answer is right here now with number two now it's f minus g so instead of going plus we're going to go negative so again it's going to be the same thing i'm going to write the same thing it's going to be 3x squared plus 7x Oops, let me include my x, 7x. But now instead of a plus sign, it's going to be a minus sign because I'm subtracting the g function. And it's going to be minus 2x squared, also minus x, minus 1. Now, be very careful here, those ladies and gentlemen. We can't just drop this negative outside the parentheses. We have to distribute it, right? So it's going to be negative 2x squared plus x plus 1. Now we bring down what's in the red, and it's just going to be 3x squared plus 7x. Now that I change the signs, now I can go ahead and combine like terms. My x squared term, so it's just going to be x squared. Then I have my x term, so it's going to be plus 8x. And then I still have my plus 1 right there, so my final solution is going to be right here. Any restrictions on the domain and range? No, there is not right now, but here we'll have some. Now we're given the same th or different functions here and here. We're going to do a, some different operations on these functions. Now, what does the dot mean in math? The dot means that we have to multiply. So I'm going to take my f of x function and take it times my g of x function. So here we go. I'm going to write down my f of x function, which is... 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'm taking that times x minus 4. Now, have we seen this before? Absolutely. All we have to do is multiply this guy by everything in here, this guy and that guy. So here we go. It's going to be 3x. Remember, we add up the variables when we multiply, or add up the exponents when we multiply variables. So it's going to be 3x cubed here times there, which is going to be minus 12x squared, moving on to the 2x, minus 2x squared plus 8x. Now to the 1, plus x, minus 4. Now let's simplify this mess. We get 3x squared. Do we have any other square terms? Yes, we do here and here. So it's going to be minus 14x squared here and there to give us plus 9x and then just minus 4. So our final guy is right here, if I can make it look nice and pretty. There it is. Now with 4, f over g. What does f over g mean? Well, that means we're going to divide. So we're going to go 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now we're going to divide. Now you'll like this part. When we divide, I'm just going to put it over x minus 4. Right? Easy enough. But now, do I have any restrictions? We look here on the bottom. Can x be all real numbers? No, it can't because if x was what number would make it no solution? If x was 4, because 4 minus 4 equals 0, and we cannot have 0, right? So, 
x, x is all real numbers, but with the exception that x cannot be 4, because if it was 4, it would be 0 on the bottom. Or if you wanted to, you could go x minus 4 equals 0, figure out that x equals 4, and then write it down. But there's your restrictions, and your answer is right here. Let's try another one. Now we're just given different functions, but now we're asked to divide f by g. So I'm going to start that off right away, and I'm going to say that we have 3x squared plus 7x, because that's my f function. I'm going to divide that by this guy right here, which is 2x squared minus x minus 1. So now this would be my answer. What are my restrictions here? Well, it's not as easy as before, right? Because it's just more than two terms. So there are a couple options how we have to solve this. Well, we can factor and use the quadratic formula on what? Well, we can factor and use the quadratic formula on the bottom right here because that would give us our zeros, right? So I'm gonna move very quickly through this just so we have enough time to get through the lesson. But we all know how to factor in quadratic formula, or use the quadratic formula, so this should just be a refresher. So how do we do it with a number in front? We multiply it to the back, so it's negative 2. Now we need factors of negative 2 that add up to negative 1. That's going to be a negative 2 and a positive 1. So I bring a 2x down and a 2x down. I plug in negative 2 and plus 1. Now what do I have to take out? I have to divide this guy by 2. So it's going to be x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. Set both of them equal to 0, so x minus 1 equals 0 and 2x plus 1 equals 0. Move over the 1, so it's x equals 1. Here we subtract over the 1, so it's 2x equals negative 1. Divide by 2, x equals negative 1 half. So your restrictions would be all real numbers except x cannot equal 1 and negative 1 half. Here with the quadratic formula, what's your a, b, and c? My b, I have opposite b, so it's opposite b, so it's going to be a plus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 1, negative 1 squared, minus 4, my a is 2, and my c is negative 1, all over 2 times 2, simplifying all that mess, so it's going to be plus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 8, oh, that's an 8, sorry, all over 4, keep going with it, we get 1 plus or minus the square root of 9 all over 4, now we go 1 plus minus 3 over 4. So now our restrictions, we get the same restrictions luckily. 4 divided by 4, which is 1, and negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half for our restrictions. So there's a couple different ways that we can find our restrictions. Now we're going to move on to the composition of functions. All that is, is a function is performed and then the second function is performed on the result of the first. So what does that mean? We have a pair of functions here, f and g. We're going to compose them, right? This is f of g of x. This is different than multiplication because this is an open circle. So let's go ahead and try to find f of g. Then we're asked to state the domain and range. Well, here we go. This guy, I'm going to rewrite this guy. You could also rewrite this guy as f and then a square bracket, g of x, and then another square bracket. That's how I'm going to write these guys down. Now, we're going to take the x value of the g function first. We'll start in the back and work towards the front. So I have f and then square bracket, g of, and now I'm just going to start with the x value of g, which is 7. Now that 7 turns into what? That 7 belongs to a 0, or the 0 belongs to a 7. So now it's going to be f of 
zero because the g of seven turns into zero. Now f of zero is what? Negative one. So now this coordinate point is seven, negative one. Let's try it again. Using another guy, we have f square bracket. Now I'm going to move on to negative one. f of g of negative one. That gives me f of seven. The negative one belongs to seven, so it's going to be f of seven. Now f of seven moving up here is seven. So now we have a coordinate point of negative one, seven. Again, we keep rocking with this. It's going to be f of g of 4 now. Now 4 belongs to the 9, so it's going to be f of 9. f of 9, does that give me anything? Yes, f of 9, moving up to our f function, gives me a 4. So now this guy is going to be 4, 4. And now we could keep going with this, but I'm not just for the sake of time. Your domain is going to be all your numbers in front. So it's going to be 7, negative 1, and 4. Your range then is going to be your y values, negative 1, 7, and 4. Here, I'm going to do this one, two quick examples here. Now it's just going backwards. Now we're starting with the f function. So it's going to look like g and square bracket f of x, another square bracket. So we have g square bracket f of, starting with 2, square bracket. Then f of 2 turns into a 6, right? 2 goes to 6. So it's going to be g of 6. Do we have a 6 for our x value? No, we do not. So we do not have a coordinate point here. But if we continued, we would have g, then square bracket f of, now it's moving on to a 9, square it up, g, and then the f of 9 turns into a 4, so it would be a g of 4, g of 4 turns into what, looking down here on g function, turns into a 9, so our coordinate point would be 9, 9. Moving on to our last example, now we're going to be asked to compose functions, not points anymore, but functions. When I see this, you can also think of this as f of g of x. Just like that. When I see something like this, I think of the g function going into the f function. So this would represent the x, and it's going to go into the f function. So let's try it. We have 3. Now wherever there's an x, I'm going to put in that function. 2x minus 1. That's going to be squared minus... 2x minus 1 plus 4. Now all we have to do is simplify this jargon. So it's going to be 3 times this mess. And also remember there's two of them. Here I'm going to distribute that negative right away. Plus 1 plus 4. Also to make it mathematically correct I have to do this. So I'm going to multiply that stuff out to give me this. Plus 1. Close that up. Minus 2x plus 1 plus 4. I'm going to distribute this and simplify here. So it's going to be 12x squared minus 12x plus 3 minus 2x plus 5. Simplify this mess to give me 12x squared minus 14x plus 8. All right, we simplified here, there, 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 and here and here for our final answer. Now be very careful though which way we're supposed to do it. Now we're going the other way. Now the f is in the back, so I'm going to put all this stuff in for my g. So it's going to be 2 times 3x squared minus x plus 4. Close it up, minus 1. Distribute the 2. We're distributing the 2 all the way through there. So it's 6x squared minus 2x plus 8 minus 1. Simplify. 6x squared minus 2x plus 7 for your final answer. And just be very careful, guys. Carry out what you normally would do. Do your math or your order of operations and you will be fine. But that does it for section 6.1, order of operations. Good day.